Alright guys, well this seems like a good time as any to discuss any ideas about improving home security or home protection, well, especially now that you've got a lot of time on your hands. Yes, yeah, so, um, so those who are savvy about um, this kind of stuff will probably know most of the information that I'm going to talk about. But there are lots of folk out there for whom this is like a, an afterthought. You know, I'll give you a condensed version of my research, but you know there are numerous sources on the internet, free sources, that have a lot of solid information. You also got the option to consult a reputable security firm, you know, should your budget allow it. But really, we'll look at what you can do now. The overriding principle that you want to adhere to is you want to make your house less desirable than your neighbours, you know, by making it a hard target. So, home security is something that you should be thinking about all the time, really. But the chances are you've moved into your house, you've installed a bit of kit, and that was it. Um, some of you may even be in rented accommodation and therefore rely on the landlord to sort stuff out. Yeah, some people are in denial that this thing will even happen, you know, that they'll even get assaulted. Simply because one, they're, in, they're a good person, they do good things, and why is it happening to them? Another reason could be that they live in a nice area. Well, believe me, you living in a nice area makes you a target. It's that level of unpreparedness, that not taking a responsibility, or even denial, that the criminal is banking on. Even with the current situation, the criminal element still exists. So, if you look at the emergency services, are stretched even more than they ever have been, which means there's less people to watch them and they know it. So the onus is on you, really, to protect you and yours. So this is not scaremongering, it's just taking responsibility. Uh, so I'm going to focus on some basics regarding home security protection, which is preventing the event from occurring, or at least slowing down its progression. And that is really to buy you some time before help can arrive, you know, police is sometimes minutes, hours away, so again you're in charge of it. Second element is home invasion, so this is where the event is happening and they're coming in. So we look at getting out, getting to a room, safe room, but that's for a separate time. Final element, which is the physical dynamic, so here I'm going to use hard skills or utilise an equaliser to stop the assault quickly. So this is really a specialist subject and often done face to face. But let's go back to the original one. So briefly we talked about motivations, you know, like what drives people to do stuff. Well, like I've already mentioned, if I need to feed my family and you've got food, I'm taking it, or a resource. You know, that's not something a rational person would say, but these aren't really rational times. And you've already seen people losing their shit over stuff in the supermarkets. So what would it be like if a proper resource dried up? You know, then, and also you've got the special individuals, like the pharmaceutically assisted types, and believe me, their supply chains are getting interrupted too. So with that comes a, a quicker need to get theirs. So if you want to look about what's your motivation, well, hopefully it starts with you and your family, you know, protecting the ones that you care about. Yeah, another motivation factor could be that you need to look at the current crime level in your area. So go to police.com. You can give yourself a scare, but um, understanding the current patterns of behaviour that will at least give you some kind of baseline attitude, you know, during normal conditions. And then from there, you can surmise well, shit's only going to get worse when things get crazy. What basic measures am I looking at then? So, a lot of people in this sector, more knowledgeable than myself, talk about an approach or a concept called the rings of security. So, this is really where you apply layers of protection and that you wrap around yourself. The biggest ring that you've got is the outside perimeter of your house. So that would be something like a fence, or a gate, you know, like or a dog, or lighting even, or some kind of signage. Oh. After that you've got a smaller uh, layer of protection, which would be something like your doors or your windows. After that you're looking at some kind of alarm system, followed by a smaller ring, which is your internal system. So looking at internal cameras or comms. And then finally, the last ring would be yourself, you know, you, yourself, and armed up, which would be within the realms of UK law. <laughs> but a lot of people make the false assumption that just having the weapon is enough, you know, like I'll stab the fucker when he comes in, etc. That's really a misguided uh, concept on a couple of levels, I think. One, because why would you allow somebody to get in that close without any preventative measures to then have to stab them, you know? Or, and also, if, do you actually possess the right mindset to do it? You know, could you cope emotionally and physically with the fallout after it? You know, there's only negative things about it. 
You want to be able to reason in court as well that you put measures in place that made your house a fortress. So the fact that the guy got in indicated that he was a fucking serious threat and meant you harm. But anyway, let's go back to outside. So a fence is designed to keep most people out, but not the determined type. So if it's damaged, you know, say from the recent storms, get it fixed. You know, if you've got gates and you can padlock them shut before dusk, then do it. You know, and if you use a padlock and it's broken, don't just close it for show, replace it and look after it. If you've got bushes around your property, keep them trimmed. Don't let it, them obscure any part of your house unless it helps keep people out. Um, but you don't want to obscure any kind of vision paths. Cameras, time might be time to invest in some decent kit, so decent system of 400 quid, put it up yourself as well. Even dummy cameras make people think twice. But that comes the need for good lighting, so you've got fixed lighting on the doors and motion lights possibly for the outside. Don't worry if it pisses your neighbour off, I mean it serves a purpose for him too. But you can adjust the sensitivity and get different bulbs anyway. One tip I made sure I heard was to make sure you put it on a trigger, so that way it stops the criminal planning his path to your house. Dogs are always useful, it goes without saying. But um, having good lighting links to signage as well, and uh, dogs linked to signage, because don't put a uh, beware of a dog sign if you haven't got one, and if you've got one, don't put one up, simple as that. Doors, you know, biggest entry point, garage is the weakest. Obviously, the basic principles you want to adhere to are keep them locked, don't have the key in the door, or keep the, don't have the door the key visible. You know, with the door frame, try and change the stripe plate if you can, or at least put different screws in so they bind better to the door frame. If the door's got a lot of glass, you can change that if possible, or, you, or utilize something specialized like 3M film. Garage door, always make sure they're shut, dead, bolted as well, and put an additional bolt if you're not gonna use it for a while. And if you're, they're on a, a remote op opening system, make sure that the fob is not left in your car overnight or for long periods of time. If you've got a patio sliding door around the back, make sure that they, they, they still fit tight. So if there's a wobble to them, they can easily be pushed out. You can put an additional deadbolt on them or at least wedge them with more wood. You know, wood jams are really good. Simple, cheap and, uh, and inexpensive. So you can apply them to the bottom door just to give yourself a bit of additional integrity. But you can get a factory made one from Amazon for about 50 quid if you want, uh, it's f if you want to use it for something like a safe room. If you've got any windows, window bars, make sure that they're adhered properly and that they can't be just pulled out. Make it a bit close and then you're looking at some kind of internal camera system, but make sure it's a good one with a Wi-Fi backup or at least some kind of power backup. Uh, but there's there's too many types to discuss there here, so and it all comes down to the property anyway, and what bets fits you and your you and your budget. But there's some simple points about making your home a harder target. You know, hopefully in the next video we'll look at the tactics of dealing with something like a more determined entrance. But um, hopefully you found some of those points useful. You know, got you thinking a bit. But uh, ultimately, take care of yourself and stay safe. All right.